Welcome to Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. In our discussions of gas laws, we've essentially dealt with only one gas at a time, a pure substance. However, gases are frequently found in mixtures. For example, the air around you is a mixture of several different gases. Now, a mixture of different gases is actually a pretty interesting case, because each gas in a mixture has the same temperature and the same volume. But what about pressure? Well, John Dalton figured out that the total pressure, so P total, the total pressure of a mixture of gases was equal to the sum of all the components of the mixture. So if a mixture of gases was made up of gas A, B, C, D, so on and so forth, the total pressure of that mixture would be equal to the pressure of gas A plus the pressure of gas B plus the pressure of gas C plus, well, you get the idea, so on and so forth. We call these individual pressures the partial pressures. So PA is a partial pressure due to gas A. P sub B is a partial pressure due to gas B. Now this is Dalton's law of partial pressures. The fact that I can add up all of the partial pressures and get the total pressure of the mixture. But something interesting happens if I look at the partial pressure of a single gas, so let's take gas A, if I look at the partial pressure of A and look at the relationship between that and the total pressure, I'll come up with something interesting. So how am I going to look at this little ratio I've come up with here of the partial pressure of A to the total pressure? Well, I'm going to use the ideal gas law. The partial pressure of A times its volume equals the moles of A, that's N, times the gas constant times its temperature. Now I could rewrite this by dividing both sides by V, and I'll get an expression that looks like this. I can do the same process for the total pressure. The total pressure equals the total moles times the gas constant times temperature divided by V. Recall that we just said earlier that in a mixture of gases, the component gases all had the same temperature and volume as the entire mixture or any other gas in the mixture. So this T and this V in each equation are constant values and the same as each other. So now I'm going to do a little substitution. This ratio, PA over P total, is going to be equal to NA times R times T divided by V over N total times R times T divided by V. Now these terms right here, RT divided by V, and RT divided by V are exactly the same. So mathematically, they cancel right out of this expression. And that leaves me with this relationship. The partial pressure of gas A, the ratio of that to the total pressure, is the exact same ratio as the moles of A over the total moles in the mixture. And this relationship is really powerful. It's derived from Dalton's law of partial pressures, but it's really powerful and we're going to see how we can use this later. This relationship should also make sense since the kinetic molecular theory tells us that the pressure is dependent on the number of particles. It's also helpful to note that this term, Na over N total, this is called the mole fraction. That's a term that you'll probably see come up a few times. Let's take a look at some examples of Dalton's partial pressure in action. Here we have a problem that says, given the following partial pressures of the component gases of air, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen, and others, find the total air pressure. So basically this is telling us that air is made up of nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide, oxygen gas, and then some other trace amounts of various gases. The partial pressures of each of these component gases is given in this table on the left here. And according to Dalton's law of partial pressures, the total pressure, which is what we're being asked to find, total air pressure, should equal the pressure from the N2 gas, plus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, plus the partial pressure of oxygen, plus the partial pressure of the other trace gases. So now I could go ahead and substitute the values from this table into this equation I just set up, based on Dalton's law of partial pressures. And I would see that the total air pressure is equal to 101.3 kilopascals, which you might recognize as being the standard atmosphere pressure. Now that example was pretty straightforward and pretty simple. Let's take a look at an example that's a little bit more rigorous. 
This problem states that a mixture of nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, and carbon dioxide gas is enclosed in a 5 liter container at 1.5 atmospheres. There are a total of 30 moles of gas in the container. If the nitrogen concentration is 2 moles per liter and the oxygen concentration is 1.5 moles per liter, what's the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide? There are clearly a lot of things going on in this problem, but we want to break it down and make it more manageable. First of all, my three gases are nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide. So I have N2, O2, and CO2. Now, it's asking me about carbon dioxide, and there's not really that much information about carbon dioxide in the problem, so I'm going to leave that alone for a second. However, I am given information about nitrogen and oxygen, particularly their concentrations the concentration of N2 and the concentration of O2. The concentration of N2 is 2 moles per liter. The concentration of oxygen is 1.5 moles per liter. Now why is this relevant? Well the gas, even if it's in a mixture, takes up the full volume of the container. So the volume of each of these three gases has to be 5 liters. If I know the concentration, the amount per liter, and the liters of the container, I can figure out the number of moles of a gas. So N2 is 2 moles per liter, and there are 5 liters. So times 5 liters is going to give me 10 moles of N2 gas. I can do the same thing with oxygen. 1.5 moles per liter times 5.0 liters equals 7.5 moles of oxygen. Now that I know the moles of nitrogen and oxygen, I can figure out what N, the number of moles, of CO2 is. Because there are 30 total moles of gas. And I just figured out how much of that is nitrogen and how much of that is oxygen. So if I subtract these out of the total of 30 moles of gas, I'm going to find out how many moles is carbon dioxide. Which in this case is going to be 12.5 moles. Now remember, I have the relationship that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide to the total pressure should equal the moles of carbon dioxide over the total moles. And I have almost all of this information considering I'm trying to find out this partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So I'm going to go ahead and start plugging things in. I don't know my partial pressure of CO2, but I do know that the total pressure is 1.5 atmospheres from the problem. I also know that I have 12.5 moles of carbon dioxide and 30 moles of gas total. Now all that's left for me to do is solve for the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So to solve for the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, I want to isolate this variable on this side of the equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 1.5 atmospheres. That's going to allow me to cancel out all the terms except for partial pressure of carbon dioxide on the left side of the equation and essentially leaves me with the partial pressure of carbon dioxide equaling 1.5 times the mole fraction. This term right here is the mole fraction. So there is definitely a lot going on in this problem. But if we break it down into pieces, starting with the information we know, and use some of the relationships given to us by Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, we can arrive at our answer for the partial pressure of a specific gas in the mixture. That wraps up our lesson on Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.